Hey guys, this one is how to use Villo on iPhone and Android. I'm gonna go through using the app, everything you need to know like adding clips, adding transitions, adding effects, and even text and GIFs to Villo. So a real basic tutorial for beginners on how to edit videos in Villo. I'll leave some more helpful videos and tutorials in the description below. Go and check that out if you want, but let's get into the tutorial. So once you've got the Villo app open, the first thing you're gonna do is import all of your videos and clips that you want to edit. You might, like me, get a screen or an advert screen. You can X out of that. So this is actually the homepage right here. You can see I have some projects that I'm already working on down below. You'll see them all there. I wanna come and create a new video. Or you can even create GIFs in Villo as well, but we're gonna create a video today. So we click on this plus, it's then gonna take you through to all the media on your phone. This will be photos and images because you can put them all in here. You can see at the top, you can actually just go through to photo or video or even GIFs on your phone. So I'm just gonna go to all and then I'm gonna click this parrot right here. So that is now down at the bottom. So as you can see, that is going to import into our timeline. You can actually pick more video clips to put in. So let's put this red squirrel in there as well. So we clicked on that. Now we have two different videos that we're gonna import into our timeline. When you've selected all the video clips you want, press this red arrow in the top right hand corner. It's gonna take you through to the video settings. This is quite important, so choose the one that you want. 16 by nine is the normal aspect ratio for landscape video. Nine by 16 is the normal aspect ratio for portrait. So if you're doing an Instagram story or a TikTok, something like that, you're gonna want nine by 16. If you're doing YouTube, 16 by nine is pretty good. You can also come down to these, which are basically cinema aspect ratios. They're gonna be super, super wide. That may be good for you. Let's just do 16 by nine to keep it simple. You can also choose content mode as well. So if you do have a kind of weird aspect ratio, you can choose for the content to fill it so there are no black bars. Fit inside, so that means the video you have fits within the content or you can put it in the center. I'm happy with fit. You can change this in the options after. Press the red arrow and go through to our editing timeline. So in the free version of Villo, you get to put just one main video timeline in. So you can see the first video we have is the parrot. And then if we scroll along, we're gonna come through to the squirrel. So the first thing you might wanna do is to edit the start point and end point of your video. So click on the video itself. If you wanna edit the start point, that's this point right here. But let's say we don't want it to start from here. We can maybe start it from here. This is when we actually want to start the clip. You can come down to this option from the start or from now. So I'm happy for the video to start from now. So I click from now and you'll see on the left-hand side, all of that clip now gets deleted. We didn't want it because we want the video to start right from here. If you want to undo anything, it's this button right here, you can press undo. We can also split the clip wherever we want. So let's say right here, we want to split the clip, come down to the split option, click split, and now that has been split. Then what we can do, for example, is want to cut this bit of the video out. We're only editing this highlighted portion of the video right now, so we can click from now, and then to the left-hand side, that's all gonna be deleted, as you can see. You can also cut off all the stuff to the right-hand side. So let's say I'm happy with this, and all the stuff to the right hand side, I don't want that. I can then essentially click until now and the right hand side is gonna be deleted as you can see. So that's super great and really simple on how to cut and edit. And then you can also put in transitions between clips as well. So we have two clips here and what I'm actually gonna do is just cut this off. So until now, I'm gonna cut that. And then this bit, I'm happy to cut this off to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go from now, that's gonna cut that bit. Now we have a cut right here and this is what's called a hard cut. There's no transition, but we can add transitions in. So let's say we're done cutting this now. So we're gonna press done like that. Now you can see between the two clips, there's this box with a dot. You can actually click on that and then you can add transitions. And you've got a load here that you can see and they actually play out for you. So there's a dissolve transition and it will play it and show it right for you. And if you click on fade to black, you can see that's a different transition. Fade to white is different. So you can go through all of these and see which one you want to use. But what's really great is you can basically just press on one and then it's gonna show you what that transition is. So you can go up like that. I think maybe you will just choose fade to black like this one, it's pretty cool. You can see just above the options, you can change the duration of the transition. Right now it's one and a half seconds, but you can change it 
in this case up to three and a half. That will just be a slower transition. As you can see, you can also move it right down so it's way quicker. You can see it plays it for you, which is really great. The normal option I think was maybe one or one and a half seconds, which is fine. You can also press reset on the left hand side to take it back to the original settings. I'm happy for that though, so I'm just gonna press apply to all like this, press done. And now we can just go through and play if you wanna play the clip ever, just come up to the play button, gonna press play and we can see that transition is there for us and we're happy with it. Other things you can do with the videos though is resize them. So if we click on this video to actually edit it, you can see up in the top, there's these lines and the arrows. You can basically pinch to zoom. So maybe I wanna zoom in right on the squirrel, then I can just pinch and zoom right in like that. And I can also pinch to zoom out. Obviously, if the video gets too small, you're gonna have black bars around there, so you may not wanna do that, but you can just edit as you want. So zoom in and out. I'm happy to just undo this because I don't need to edit the size, but now you can see how to do it. There are also auto options for the layout as well. You can come down here to layout like this, and there's actually some auto options. So you can maybe have just uh, on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side like this. You can play around with these top and bottom. Obviously they're not really suitable for this clip. So I'm just gonna do cinematic one, press done. And then we basically don't have any edits. What's really great as well is that when you undo something, you'll see what you have just undone in the middle. So if I press undo, you can see that the options are coming up and it tells you exactly what you're actually undoing, which I think is pretty cool. If we press done here, let's come down to some other media that we can add into the videos. So we have uh, our clip here, we have a couple of clips and a transition. We can definitely add some BGM or background music. You can press on this and basically there's a ton of music and sound effects that you can use. You can actually go through to your iTunes library. If you have one, go through to Villo. They have a ton of different sound effects. Now you can choose these as you wish, but let's just input one just for show so I can click on memory one, I can listen to it. I'm happy with that. I pressed the tick button and now that's added onto the timeline. Now what you can do is essentially move it around. So you can use this option here and you can move it either left or right onto the original video as you can see. You can also change the start and end points just like video by pressing the end point. So if I press the end point down, this is a start point, sorry. I can just drag it and edit the start point of the movie, but I can put this anywhere I want on the video and then use this bottom setting here to just scroll through where exactly that is. If you're happy with it there, you can just press done, but down at the bottom, you can see some different options. So you can change the volume of that music but if you're happy with that, you can just press done. And now as you can see, the new track, the BGM track is available to see below the original, but we can come and basically edit it whenever we want just by pressing it. You can change the volume. You can also edit where it starts. If I just get rid of this, cause I don't want any copyright claims on the video, so I'm gonna delete it, but that's how you do BGM. You can see sound effects are done in exactly the same way. Click on sound effects. You're gonna have a ton in here. You can just input it anywhere you want on the video timeline. Same for voiceover too. You can actually just press this button in the middle, record a voiceover. It's gonna come straight into the timeline. You can put that onto your video. Other things you can do though are add, adding text. So we can just press the text in the middle and it's gonna take us down to the text track right here. Press text, it's gonna come up with a bunch of options. Just press one that you really like the look of. I'm happy with this one up here, so I'm just gonna press this. It goes right onto the video. You can then hold and press this option. It's gonna make it bigger. You can pinch and zoom in to make it bigger as well, or just use one finger in the middle and move it around wherever you want. So let's put it here, for example, and we can press the tick button right here. Again, that's gonna input it. You can change where it is with this option. You can also make it appear for longer by editing the end point like this. I'm happy with that. Down at the bottom, opacity you can change. So if we click on that, you can see I can turn it down. So it's gonna basically fade or turn it up to 100. So I'm happy with 100, press done. You can change the font and styles. I won't go into it, but you can just press these and change them. What's really cool though is animation. If we press this, there are now some animations that automatically we can put on. So we can zoom in animation or zoom out animation. All of these with the padlock are part of the paid version. So if you're using it for free, you can't use them, but let's just do zoom in. So press zoom in and I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna press 
done. And then we can see this is now a zoom in animation. So if I go back to the start, just press play, you can see the text will have this animation onto the screen. So it sort of zooms right in like that. It's a pretty cool effect rather than it just coming up without any effect. I'm happy, I'm just gonna press done. Now you can see that is in the text track. You can add loads and loads on here anywhere you want in the video. If we press play, we can see it just comes up right there where it's green. You can see that means the effect is there. And when there's no green, there is no effect in the text track that we're looking at. So as you can see with Vilo, everything is done in tracks. You have the main video track at the top, and then you have BGM, sound effects, and when you do add an effect, you will see it in the timeline and the track for that effect. Where there's green, that means that there is an effect. And if nothing is there, there are no effects placed on. There are other things we can add though, not just text, we can add stickers. So you can definitely press this. It's gonna take you down to the sticker track. We can go into stickers. It's around Halloween right now. So there's a lot of Halloween ones. Anything with a padlock, as I said, you won't be able to choose in the free version, but let's just put a silly ghost on. So you can press the ghost like this and essentially rearrange it, resize it, pinch and zoom and rearrange. Then we can press the tick button. Once more, change exactly where you want it on your timeline with this button and change the length of it by editing the end point or the start point. I'm happy with that one. I can press done like this. You can see it's entered onto the motion sticker track. Where it's green, that means it's there. We can just use our thumb to slide along and see exactly where it is, or we can come up and press play. It's gonna play the track. We can just see if it works for us or not. Something else to consider is that when you add things on, of course, we already have this here as well, this text option. They're playing at the same time. So they're gonna to play together over the top of each other. So you may want to just keep that in mind when you're adding stickers and text. Picture in picture is also really great though. It's an option so we can come down here to picture in picture. You can add an image. So let's add an image in by pressing this. Maybe I just wanna choose this fish so that will load into the Velo timeline. You can see it adds a picture on top of the video. You can then rearrange this, resize it just like we did with text and the animated GIF there. Again, place it wherever you want in the timeline. Let's place it down here, for example, and then we'll make it a little bit longer. Then we can also resize the fish however we want and place it up here, that's fine. Maybe we wanna add an animation, so we can come down here to animation and we want it to zoom in like this, press done, and then done again. That will be placed into our timeline and we can see how that looks by pressing play. So we should get that fade, the picture in picture is there and it will just play for however long you have it on your timeline. If you wanna delete anything, just highlight it like this and then you can come down to this delete option right here and that will be deleted. And then we can also change the filters or the style of the images. So let's say you wanted to change it, we can come to filter. You can change the style of the video, but it's not baked in and you can change little parts of the image. So let's go to filter right here. These are different styles, so you can flick through them and see which one you think looks really great on that part of the video. But maybe we want one that's gonna bring out the red in the squirrel, so let's just choose this one. You can choose the strength of the filter by sliding down, taking it away, or putting it on more. So it's actually slightly bright, but let's just do it for the tutorial. This is fine, so we change that, we can press tick like this, and like everything, you can change where it starts and ends. So I only want to change the filter for the squirrel portion, so I'm gonna change it right here, and then gonna make it end at the end of the video like this, and press done. Then you can see this filter is just on the squirrel. So we changed the squirrel filter and style, but the parrot filter, we can change this individually as well. So we can press done on that and come to filter, press filter. Then we can put a different filter that complements the parrot a little bit more as opposed to the one that we used on the squirrel. So let's say this one, just turn down the strength. Let's say that was good and press the tick on that one. Then we can make this start from the start of the parrot timeline and we can drag it, make sure it ends just when the squirrel filter starts like that and press done. Now you have two different filters, two different styles, because you have two different video clips. If you're happy with your video and you've added everything on and cut it as you want, come to export right up here, press this one, then you can choose some settings. You can choose either a video or a GIF. 
When you click on resolution, you can change this low to 4K Ultra HD. You can change this as and when you want. When you export, the frame rate is super important. Just make sure that the export frame rate is the same frame rate that the video is that you imported into the timeline. Just see what that is in your settings and then make sure that the export frame rate is the same. And you can even set an alarm that tells you that your video is ready. You can press export, that's gonna export for you. And if you're using the free version, you are gonna have to just be served an ad when you're exporting. But hey, it's free, I don't think that's a big deal. Go and check out the description for way more tutorials and helpful videos. I will leave all the information in there for you. Subscribe if this one was helpful for you. That's it for this one though. Thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.